Hi, Dr. Joe. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the Integrative Health Coaching Success Podcast. Honestly, the pleasure is mine. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Oh, great. I'm so excited for you to share your story with the listeners. You have, I think, such a great perspective and so much uh, to share, and I'm really excited to dive in. So what we'll do to start is please share with everybody kind of what you currently do. We're going to kind of go into maybe how you got there, but what is your kind of role in this health and wellness field uh, to date? To be honest, what I do is I educate, and I think that's the missing link to healthcare. You know, we, we, they dictate a lot, you know, you need to take this pill and you need to do this, but never the why, never the how, never, you know, the understanding of why am I doing something? Because even with children, if you don't explain to them why they're doing something, they're not going to want to do it. So what I do is I really pride myself on the why, you know, I live in the why. So this is why we eat vegetables. This is why we move our bodies. This is why we try to breathe the cleanest air. So I think, you know, going back to the, to the root of the word doctor, meaning docete, or Latin for docetti meaning to teach. So that's what I try to do. I try to teach as much as I can. And I tell people all the time, if I, you know, my philosophies and my ideologies, they don't need to be yours. You know, I just, I'm speaking through my lens, you know, and from what I see. And I think the education is the missing link to people actually um, unleashing their true potential as far as health. You know, everything we do, everything we eat, everything we drink is going to feed health or feed disease. And we need to understand that there are choices, not the responsibility of the government, not the responsibility of our neighbors or our friends, or even our our mothers, our loved ones. Nobody can do these things for us. So I think empowering people, um, explaining to them what it is they need to do or what it is maybe that I do and just showing them. And that's pretty much where I, where I stay. So I try not to um, infringe on anybody's, you know, want or need to do something else, but I share with with them what I do. And when it comes to the consultations, I basically do virtual health coach consultations and everyone's like, well, you're a doctor and, or you're a chiropractor. I say, okay, you can call me whatever you want. It's not going to change the way I speak. You know, it's not going to change what I do for my clients or my patients. It's the same because it really stems down to diet, lifestyle, environment. Those three variables are correlated to, to over 90% of disease. You know, it's not, um, something we're just born with genetics is a very small part of the puzzle. There's, there's something called epigenetics by Dr. Bruce Lipton that says that those three variables, diet, lifestyle, environment, they have the ability to alter our genetic sequence and it's happening right now. And, um, where we expose our bodies, what we put into our bodies, what we expose our internal organs to our nervous system, it's all going to react. It's going to provoke an an immune response or it's going to provoke a ill response. So, that's what I do. I try to give people as much information as I possibly can. So I basically sell my time. And that's something I think that's missing. You know, like you, you see doctors, they're in, they're out. They, they just, they're only interested in the pill that goes into your mouth, not the food, the air, the water, which to me, there's a, there's a disconnection there. So I really try to stay in the why and educate people why they should be doing certain things. Okay. That's great. So you mentioned, um, chiropractor. So you are a doctor of, of chiropractic. Tell us a little bit of how you went from, I guess, is that was first. So that was kind of your first education in kind of this realm. And then you moved on to something else. Can you share with our listeners how you got started and what that kind of pivot point may have looked like for you from one (laughs) thing to the next? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, for me, um, I always knew I wanted to teach people. I was just a natural born, like I had passion for education. And like, when I started to link things together, I'm like, wow, this is so beautiful. I just want to, I just want to tell someone, like, I want to call someone and tell them this information because it can change their lives. And, um, so I wanted to be an MD, a naturopathic doctor, but growing up in the state of Florida, born and raised, there's no scope. Like you can't do anything as an ND, which it should be a red flag. It should be concerning that we are, you know, looking away from natural methods and more towards synthetic interventions, invasive therapies, surgeries. Um, so I said, you know what? let me look into another practice. And I even considered DO and MD, but I didn't want to be synonymous with medicine. So what I did was I looked up into a school called uh, Life University in Marietta, Georgia, one of the best chiro schools in the country. That was very, what you would call mixed. So they're straight chiropractic, which is, you know, adjusting, manipulating osseous, maybe even soft tissue, uh, bone and soft tissue. So then there's the mixed chiropractors, which all of my friends called me a mixer. And I didn't really care. It didn't bother me whatsoever because I knew that 
it was more than just physical medicine that was needed for people to heal. Um, so I went to school anyways, I went to the, uh, get the doctor chiropractic. I graduated in 2013, um, coming out of school being, you know, having over a quarter million in debt, I was kind of, you know, uh, felt a sense of urgency to get a job. Um, I was offered a good paying job at a mainstream medical rehab center. So they had, it was integrative. We had DOs, um, we had, uh, MDs and we had DCs of course. So what was I doing? Well, I was simply manipulating the cervical, the thoracic and the lumbar, or maybe the wrists and the elbows, just adjusting people. And what I was doing at the same time was watching them come into the office, pick out, uh, you know, a candy from the, from the, uh, secretary area and they would, you know, eat their Skittles or their chocolate as they go over to get a coffee from the Keurig and put their coffee made in there with all sorts of chemical. I mean, and then they would come back to get adjusted and I'd send them on their way. And I watched this over and over again. Um, and I would try to stay in the, in the examination rooms with the patients and talk to them. And they, they, be, you know, my, my superiors would be knocking Dr. Joe, come on, we got to go. And I, I wasn't allowed to speak to them the way I wanted to knowing that the information I had would help them exponentially more than an adjustment would. So I continued, of course, and I, it was only a matter of time before I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't, you know, money, no money. It doesn't matter. I'd rather live in a tree and do what I want to do than, you know, trade my life for money, um, and, and not be able to help people. So I walked away in 11 months. It took for me to walk away from the job. Um, I tried to do things on my own, but back to that, you know, I put myself into a box. You're a chiropractor. You adjust the skeletal system. Um, that's what you are because that's what society says, not what I learned in school, but what society says. So at that point I, I realized that I had to, I had to do something. So I started, I started talking, um, online. I didn't really, I was again, put myself into a box. So I was almost like embarrassed to talk about anything other than what people thought a chiropractor was. So I really had to just kind of get over that and realize that I had to express my passions for who I was and it would allow me to fulfill my life and, you know, my, my, um, passion for educating. So I tried it. It didn't work because I, there was no social media at the time. There wasn't a way of, of connecting broad, you know, there was no Instagram or maybe there was, but it was just starting out. And, um, I failed at being able to, you know, I'd go to the local organic eateries. I'd try to talk to people and it was very hard to keep up with. It was very hard to, you know, pay bills and survive. So I went for another job at a neurology clinic. So I worked at a very prestigious um, neurodiagnosis center with one of the best uh, neurologists in the country, but back to the same stuff. You're the chiropractor here. Yeah, you're the doctor, you know, on staff. We're the only one we have, but you are here to adjust people physically and that's it. You can assess their soft tissue. You can assess their heart tissue, but there's no nutrition here. You know, that's something you can't do. So it was just a matter of time before I had to walk away again. And at that point, um, I, I had nothing. And I was with my, who's my fiance now. And she looked at me and she said, I, I support you, whatever you decide to do, I support you. We had nothing. And I walked away, um, trying not to get emotional. I started to speak. I just started to talk. I clicked on my screen. I had a thousand followers, mostly family and friends. And I started talking and this was late 2018. And fast forward to today, almost two years talking to 50,000 plus people. And it all came from them resonating with, with my story and with my teachings and really just educating people about the magic that existed within them. The pure magic. Most people don't, you know, they're so deluded and disconnected from mainstream society, mainstream media, mainstream healthcare, that most of what I say sounds crazy. Um, but for me, it's the opposite. You know, it's not radical to eat fruits and vegetables. It is radical, however, to have 600,000 people a year have their chest ripped open and a vein artery from their leg put into their heart to bypass, um, you know, a, a uh, ischemia or some sort of infarct in the heart. That's radical. So for me, seeing the effects of diet, lifestyle, environment and being able to share that with people, it just opened up a whole new world for me. And honestly, I'd never, it's, I never even imagined to be where I am today. I wake up every day for messages from mainly mothers. Um, women happen to be, in my eyes, they're, they're the most connected to from which we came. That matriarchal instinct is just something else. And most of my following are women, some of them single women trying to navigate this world for their children. 
And that's who I talk to every day. Men too. I don't want to, you know, um, not include them. They're there, but it's a very small percentage. So it's, it's something that I've taken, um, as like a personal responsibility to be a man and to show that men are not just burly, um, you know, there to, you know, support the financially. No, we are all equals and we can all, we all have a part to bring to a nuclear family and to a community. So I just started talking and it was like the, the feedback and the, the love and support that I got from the community, our community, you guys, us, it, it made me stay. And that was over two years ago and I don't look back. I never will. Oh my gosh. So, it, you know, it's easy to make a change when everything aligns financially and everything aligns, you know, you, you can guarantee that it's going to be a success or you have the financial pad to take a leap, but to literally, and you choked up to have nothing and to say like, I'm, I'm going to do this anyway. This is, this is what my heart's calling me to do. This is what I believe my passion is. This is what I meant to do and to do it at the risk of literally everything is amazing. And that's, there's, there's a trend I think with, with these podcasts so far and it's people taking risks and people putting their kind of like burning desire that like that, that whisper inside, right. That listening to that is ultimately what launches you into the the greatest situations possible and being able to reach so many people because that, you know, before we signed on, we were talking quickly about how, you know, social media has certainly its downfalls, but also the biggest blessing is that we're able to feel connected to people who walk, talk, think like we do and have some sort of community and support around that. And you have certainly, I shared with you how it was for me early on when I started following you, you've done that for so many. And I think women in particular, you mentioned, you know, with kids, like we just have that instinctual mama bear, like don't mess with my kids. Oh yeah. (laughs) And I'm going to protect them at all costs. And if you mess with them, um, you know, there's going to be a problem. And and yeah, and we will search to the ends of the earth to make sure that we are, and not that fathers don't, that is not what I'm saying, but I feel like there's this just slight little something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and you have offered that support for your, for your listeners. So Let's kind of on that note, switch gears. And so you, you know, went from chiropractic and you got into the social media world. So currently a majority of your, you know, education, which is your passion happens on social media and then also in individual consults. Mm -hmm. But uh, because social media is kind of a big realm, I'm curious what your, you know, how you went from not maybe a lot of followers to the followers that you have now. Was it just you kind of being your authentic self? Walk us through a little bit about what that process was like. Yeah. Um, truly, I think what it is, is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And when you can show people you care and that you're, I'm not there selling stuff. I'm not, you know, yeah, I have codes for things that I use, but it's really just to expose people to them and give them an opportunity to, to obtain something like that. Um, but you know, I think just getting on there and speaking passionately and, you know, with no inhibitions and realizing that I'm not going to resonate, I'm not going to please everybody. There's nobody or nothing that can, and we have to embrace that. We have to realize like, you're not everybody's cup of tea. Um, there's extreme hate, um, from behind, you know, keyboards and screens. You just can't let it get to you. And it became to a point where, you know, everybody's good at something. Everybody has a passion for something. And my passion was, you know, the intricacies of the body and how it all works. I mean, when I was a kid, I was like, why do things taste that are really good for you taste so bad? And why are things that are really bad for you taste so good? And I always had these anthropological questions, like, where do we come from? You know, like what, you know, what keeps us healthy? And and I thought to myself, I have a human body, my future um, wife and children, they're going to have human bodies. And what can I do to really strengthen my ability to protect my family and to, to provide for them moving forward within the world that we're in today? So all I did was grasp onto that. I realized who I'm speaking to are other Joey's. That's what my friends call me and other Alina's and Gabriel's my son. And we all deserve that information to choose. This is a choice and it's informed consent, you know, anything short of informed consent is propaganda, you know, and there's no, there's definitely no time where the public's concern concern should trump individually, individual autonomy and sovereignty and our ability to choose what works best for us and our children, because we're all bio-individual. And the way I, a lot of people ask me all the time, Dr. Joe, why don't you show what you eat? 
And um, the reason why I don't show so much of what I eat is because I don't want people to just eat what I eat and then think that that's going to be okay for them. And I don't want people to think because they don't eat what I eat that they're doing it wrong um, because it really comes from how we feel when we're doing something. How do you feel when you're doing it? Listen to your body. You know, that harmony exists for a reason and we we're very disconnected. So I'm really educating people to reconnect, to wake up in the morning and put their bare feet on the bare ground, to expose as much of their skin as they can to the sun, uh, to breathe in that fresh air, to cycle good thoughts into their head, to check on their community. And all of these things corroborated my philosophies of, of healing and health. So they're like, oh, wow, like he has such an outside of the box perspective. Um, you know, he talks about toothpaste and he talks about laundry detergent. He talks about air quality. These seem important. And let me just follow and see what happens. And I think it just came from not being um, critical of people, not judging people and saying, you know, live and let live. You do what you want and I'll do what I want. And, you know, if you want to choose to be someone different you were than you were five minutes ago, you have that right and I'll support you. And you don't have to answer to anybody. And um, giving people that solace and contentment, I think allowed them to say, you know what? I don't care what this person, you know, if someone else, I tell them all the time, if someone else appears to have authority and power over you, it's because you gave it to them. You take it back. It's yours. You don't have to justify. The only person you have to justify something to is your significant other, because you now share a household with them. You lay your head down at night next to them. And that's something that's the only person I believe you truly should be attempting to please. Whereas everybody else, they're going to take what they want and they're going to leave the rest behind. And that's what we have to realize. You should never be looking down your nose at someone unless you're helping them up. And so many times people just want to look down their noses and say, you know, oh, well, I'm this religion and um, I'm going to do the, you know, roll up my sleeve and get this and you're not. And this is how much money I make. And this is what I eat. What do you eat? Like, it shouldn't be about that. It should be about coexisting in variation. We are all so very different and we need to stay different. And I think showing people like, laying it out for people and saying, look, like this is what the human experience was meant to be. Um, and that's what people just grab onto. And they're like, wow, like that's, that's so true. And that's the things that I took from my education, from my readings. I'll never stop reading. I'll never stop learning. I'll never stop learning, unlearning and relearning. And I think that's the biggest thing we need to realize that just because we thought something was true, you know, doctors used to recommend brands of cigarettes, you know, you, you, that's, that was a, a known thing, you know, like, so when things change, we need to roll with it and we need to realize that change is the only constant and we need to continue to reach and grab for what makes sense to us and not our moms, not our neighbors, certainly not our followers or people that are, um, have nothing to do with our, our household. We need to make ourselves happy. So I think that's really where it came from. Yeah. The, the big following, you know? Yep. And I think too, the, there's so much polarizing, dividing, so much of that in our world, even if we're not paying attention to it, it's there. And so many people just want to be kind of understood and held in a way that they feel free to make whatever kind of assumptions, choices that they want to. And so to have a, a platform where you are giving people so much knowledge and power, but also giving them the space to just be who they want to be and still make the choices, because there's, I think we could probably agree that there's lots of people in social media that have the same views perhaps of you and I, mm -hmm. but that are doing it in a much different way and are doing it kind of in a, a more, you know, uh, you know, making assumptions or in a way that doesn't feel as inviting or as comforting and supportive. And I think that's really right. where you set yourself apart and probably why you do resonate with so many women, because that is, you know, it's a place that we all need to, to find. And that is, I think, a blessing of what you're doing for sure. Thank you. You know, we're all right where we're supposed to be, you know, all the time we look at other people and we're like, I want to be there or I, I want to get to that point. And we don't realize that there's so much work that that person put in, or maybe that's where they began, but it doesn't, it's not correlated to where we are or where we're going. And we really have to stop and let other people be themselves and find who we are. And it doesn't have to match. Like you don't have to be just like someone else. You know, we can agree on 150 topics, but there might be one or two that we don't, they can be extreme topics. It really doesn't matter. The idea is we are human beings. And if you look at the animals, they're all rolling around in the grass naked, eating fruits off the trees. And here we are <clears throat> taking people off the front of an Aunt Jemima label or canceling Dr. Seuss. None of this makes sense. We should be allowed as human beings to have access to anything and everything that we create.
and, or, or, or not access to it. You know, that's our choice, but to infringe on someone else's right to obtain something, anything, whether it be freedom or, or total, you know, um, authority. And, and you know, where this, we we're leading into this draconian sort of, um, nanny state where people, they really want to be, like you said, told, like, what do I eat? What do I do? What do I, where do I go? Um, it's not that that's not how we all find what we need to find. We it's an individual basis. You know, you have to, like I said before, you find certain things you like and you leave the rest behind. And that's really what my following I think does is they realize that, you know, I, I don't, I have a lot of differences. Like I am, you know, I, I enjoy shooting guns. I don't eat meat. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very like in tune with nature. Like I won't step on a bug, you know, I, I'd, I'd sprain my ankle before I step on an animal, if I had the ability to, and that's just something that I'll never feel in fear. I won't feel an inferior male figure because of that. And I think that's, what's lost. It's like this masculinity and femininity and you have to be like, stay in your lane. No, I'm a human being. <laughs> You're going to let me do whatever I want. And if not, you could just go that way. You know, like in this day and age, this is like a digital doorstep. We have to realize that it's like someone coming on your property and then saying, I don't like those palm trees there. Like they should be over there. I don't even understand the, the mechanism in someone's brain where they think that that means anything, you know, where your, your feelings should matter in my household. And that's what we have to take back that can, that, um, authority of ourselves, our children and what we want, you know, and what we, what we see in this life. I mean, we're literally just, we're experienced, we're nature experience in itself for a very short period of time. And I'm not gonna let somebody else tell me what to do with that period of time. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so with what you're doing now, um, as far as the Instagram, we've kind of touched upon that. So then you do uh, consults with clients, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. do you do, you know, lab testing? How did you kind of get from sharing knowledge to also working with clients as far as, you know, offering a little inspiration for our listeners on that end? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, really what it came down to is, um, educating people of the, you know, truly there are over 80,000 man-made chemicals that we're exposed to daily from, before you even get out of your bed to the bathroom, which you put in your mouth then you go into the kitchen and then you go into your car and then you go and sit under the blue light in, in your office. And then you go back home and, you know, we're wearing clothes. We don't want to wear to go to a job. We don't want to leave a house empty all day that we're, that's why we have the job in the first place. So it's like this huge disconnect. And, um, I wanted to educate people as to like those environmental toxicities and where they exist, you know, because uh, most people are in what's known as a repair deficit. You know, the skin you see on me and the skin I see on you every 30 days regenerates brand new from what, from the foods we eat. Of course, we are nothing but a pile of food. Um, same thing with our gastrointestinal tract every three to five days. It is completely brand new out of the foods we ate. So we have to continuously realize that these toxicities, when they build up in the body, you know, we have billions of dendritic cells, white cells, white blood cells that can go and neutralize these toxicities, our lymph, everything. We are hardwired when the mechanisms meant to eradicate these things. You know, we were, we weren't meant to live in a bubble. We weren't meant to douse ourselves in hand sanitizer and stay away from each other. I mean, that is completely erroneous. What we need to do is we need to get back to nature and avoid the synthetic man-made chemicals all around us. So what I've done is well, as I'm educating people, Hey, you should change your toothpaste, anything you're putting in your mouth, you know, fluoride is just because fluoride makes teeth harder. Doesn't mean that it's necessarily good for your body, right? So you're oversimplifying. It's a reductionist way of looking at it. It's a neurotoxin. I think we can harden our teeth, hydroxyapatite, calcium, magnesium, our body can do it without, you know, human intervention. So as I'm educating people, okay, you know, these are the environmental toxins that exist around you. Um, and they have these illnesses that they, you know, they went to 10 doctors and doctors probe and prod and blood test, blood tests, which blood tests are like the last thing I want to run because that's like me taking a blood test of a, someone who eats cheeseburgers every day. I'm going to expect a lipid panel to be outside of normal limits. So I'm not going to waste the patient or client's time or their money running a blood test. I'm going to say, you need to stop eating cheeseburgers every day. You know, if you're punching yourself in the face, I'm not going to say, Hey, come over here. Let me show you what I have for face pain. I'm going to say, Hey, stop punching yourself in the face. And then let's talk about what's left after you remove the causation, the root of it. So the, the environmental toxicity panels that I run, you know, full non-chemical, um, non-metal profiles of 170, the great plains laboratory. I love to use. I know you guys use them sometimes too. Um, you know, testing for heavy metals that can accumulate in the body because as most people know who either took IHP or follow Dr. Cabral, we, we have a 
a phase one, phase two, and phase three detoxification where our bodies actually conjugate fat soluble vitamins or fat soluble toxins. And we turn them into water soluble through nothing but micronutrients through things like pycnogenol, magnesium, um, uh, glutathione. And these things are found in food, not at Walgreens, you know, not somewhere, you know, we don't go somewhere like off into space and come back and say, nobody, look, I have the medicine. It's all around us. So I show people, Hey, you know, if you really want to understand why you might be having these issues, let's run some, let's run some toxicity panels. I mean, I'm 36 years old. I've been exposed. GMOs hit the dirt in the late nineties. Um, we started using heavy metals and sunscreens, fluoride and oral care. All of these things have been around for a while and they can accumulate known as what's known as bioaccumulate in the body. So without giving our body what it needs to neutralize these chemicals and expel them through what are known as our amunctory organs, our biggest one being our skin. When you sweat, you have the ability to remove microbes, spirit heats, metals, plastics, everything can, can come through the skin the same way it can go in, it can come out. Um, breathing. If I were to be talking against a glass wall right now, you'd see all the moisture building up. I'm actually expelling vapor and I can expel toxins the same way. Actually, there's a condition diabetics. If they are, if they're in uh, acidosis, they will actually, their, their breath will smell like acetone because they're relinquishing that out of their breath and you can save their lives. Um, by just knowing something like that, um, the kidney, the liver, the colon, you know, feces, urination, that's just how we get things out of the body. But all too often we're fighting our food, we're fighting our air, we're fighting our water. So all of that activity, you know, it's like having a full on army and a cavalry and a brigade going towards the, you know, the wrong enemy. And now you have all of the susceptibility and your body should be paying attention to repairing tissues, but really it's too busy, um, neutralizing toxins. So finding the toxic, the total toxic load is what I call it. And finding out how much are you storing in your body? You know, how could we expect to be healthy if we have you know, um, 96 percentile of perchlorate in the body or polystyrene or acrylamide or what any of these things that are found in nature, um, and they're building up in our bodies. How can we, how can we expect to be healthy? So it's like a cigarette smoker, uh, you know, saying, why do I have all these issues? Well, my, my most likely diagnosis is, is the cigarette. So until we stop the influx of toxins, cause you can think of toxicity as a one-way street. If you're pouring toxins in your body's not going to continuously remove them like a cigarette smoker, when they're, when they stop smoking and they try to quit, they feel absolutely horrible. And the reason is because their body's finally able to say, okay, no more smoke, no more toxins coming in. Let's start to get it out. So it gets it out. It activates it. Your food starts to neutralize these chemicals and carry and activate them into the system. And now you feel it. They're known as what's Herxheimer reactions or, or just what are known as health crises, like a headache while you're detoxing normal, actually a good sign. Um, so that's why if that cigarette smoker were to go smoke again, they felt, they feel good again. Cause they stopped that release, you know, and that goes to analogy. If your body's your home and you want to renovate your home, you want to make it nicer. You want to make the walls nicer. You want to make the floors nicer. You want to make, you know, just a better place to live doesn't it have to get really, really dirty first? Like, isn't there going to be dust everywhere? Walls are going to be ripped down. It's going to look like total chaos. And that's what happens until one day you wake up in a brand new home and there's nothing, there's nothing more, you know, meaningful than that is having a brand new home to live in. So that's what I educate people on, you know, being able to be there for them and say, this is what you should expect. Um, and letting them feel confident in what they're doing and the why and understanding it and really feeling, you know, the, the power that exists within their body, that's where it all goes. And that's where people are like, okay, well, I want to see where my toxicity levels are so we can kind of uh, assess where they might be coming from. You know, we'll get our water checked, we'll get our soil checked, whatever it may be. And then we can start to heal. We can start to remove the cause, the root cause and start to really heal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so many people too, that even if you have this more natural approach to wellness medicine and whatnot, even some people it can think about, you know, quote unquote healing as like, well, I'm just going to take these supplements to fix what's happening, or I'll just take these supplements that help me metabolize alcohol better and they'll all be good. Yep. Um, but it's such, it's a much different road than actually, like you said, instead of giving you a nice natural solve for the bruise on your face from punching yourself in the face, no, 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 let's stop the, the trauma first. And then 
you know, we don't need to worry about the sub. My goal is to always say like, I don't want you to be reliant on these supplements. We need to get you to the point where your body is actually very happy to maintain homeostasis and it's not dealing with all this toxic load. And then you don't need to work on things to, to fix it because those things end up, you know, just being a natural band-aid. They're, they're necessary in the beginning to help the body along, but then they can end up just being a natural crutch for people to go on with a more toxic lifestyle. It's so true. It's like, it's like the prescription the doctor gives you. It's giving you an excuse to continue to do whatever you did to get that disease or illness. So supplements are the same way. I, I'm my patients and clients know this. I don't like supplements. I think they're necessary. They have their place just like medicine has its place, but I am not the person who's going to look at, um, tests or, or, you know, lab results and just say, Oh, here are the supplements. Like that is like you just said, you're literally skipping over the entire point of everything. And then that's to remove what's, what's causing this. You won't need, you know, if you're magnesium deficient, you need to eat more nuts and seeds. Like there are, there are ways around, you know, health doesn't come in a bottle and it doesn't come from your girlfriend or your mom. Like it has to come from within. And we are literally, we're covered in bacteria, blanketed in bacteria. The earth is blanketed in bacteria. We need to stay close to the earth and to the connection we have with it. And that's, what's going to allow us to to truly feel and get better because you see, and we all see healthcare is it's completely upside down. Let's, you know, touch on what's going on right now for them to mandate or recommend forcefully recommend, I guess you can say it muzzles and rolling up your sleeve. How can they not mention drinking more water, moving your body, um, meditation, br- breath work, um, eating fruits and vegetables, getting sun, leaving your house and getting sun. I mean, like there, there is no arguing now with the, with the studies that are coming out that are done by the CDC that are done by these, you know, government corporations that vitamin D is a major component in how your body responds to any viral infection that comes along. Stay in your house. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect example. What you brought up is so people like, Oh, vitamin D, let me get some vitamin D. Little do they know Vitamin D, the, the true name of active vitamin D3 is 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol. All this means, it's a big fancy word for the methylation of calciferol in your liver and on your skin. So what happens is when we expose our skin to sunlight, the sunlight can methylate the cholecalciferol and create active D3. And active D3 can actually scour the bloodstream, the mucous membranes, cross the blood-brain barrier, and find viruses, poke a big fat hole in them, and literally inject something known as perforin, combust their envelope, and they, and they cease to exist and their effect on us ceases to exist. And really what, what I think we have to touch on too, is the fact that viruses, bacteria, yeast, fungus, this is part of the microbiome. This is who we are. We are more foreign matter than we are domestic. In other words, there are 1.3 foreign cells in on and around my body. than there are Dr. Joe cells. So for us to villainize certain things and say, Oh, you need to remove yourself from that. That's just, it's, we're getting so far from what health really is. And it's just, it's, it literally, it makes my heart hurt. And I wish, I wish I can say and do more. And that's why I continue to, to talk. I mean, right now I'm a little, I guess you can say shadow band censored on Instagram because what I'm saying isn't mainstream. And, but since when do doctors and lawyers and the professionals, when do, since when do they all agree? It's never happened. So why are we hushing people with opposing viewpoints? It's like modern day book burning. That's what's, that's what's happening. So we need to realize that we know more than we're led to believe. We are more powerful than we were led to believe. And it was all there to, to, to create revenue. And I get it like capitalism, you know, America, you know, wherever you are, you should be allowed to make money, but it shouldn't be deceiving human beings. I will never, ever support, promote, um, mention anything I don't believe in myself or use myself. And that's something that I'll pride myself. And I get messages every day, hey, Dr. Joe, I'll give you $1,500 for one post and four stories and you get free product and 50% for everything you sell. I take one look at the product and I'm like, Oof. I don't answer. I, I'll wait to the fifth time they message me and I'll be like, look, I'm sorry. I'm just not into it. Maybe you don't really follow me on, on social media, but this, this product goes against, you know, like if you want to hire me to consult you to make a better product that I can do, Um, but I'm not going to accept a bribe. I'm not going to accept, you know, a payoff so I can just, so I can sit in my house and my four walls with my family and be okay. What about you? What about everybody else? We are, we are a collective. And I think that's what we have to get back to, you know, pushing, pushing these, these, um, these temptations of 
what we think matters most and going back to what matters most. And that's being in close proximity, staying close to nature, animals, you know, microbes, all of it. How do we get this far? If, if viruses were here to kill us, how do we get here? You know, viruses need a host. They need a viable host. They don't want someone who's, you know, a decrepit and about to fall over. They want someone who's going to provide them a nice habitat to live in. So let me ask you this. How are they killing us? They're, they're not. I mean, this is my personal belief, but there's many theories, the viral theory, the exosome theory. When we get sick, what do we do? We drain from our nose. We drain from our rectum. We drain from our mouth, phlegm. We're, we're producing um, these exosomes and they're basically vacuoles full of what look just like viruses. I mean, they looked, I mean, it all looks the same. So it's all theoretical. Even what we learn in school, they whisper in your ear when you grab your doctor and they're like, this is how we think it works. We're not really sure. Cause we don't, you know, we don't go inside and watch the Krebs cycle go like that's not, there's no, you know, TCA cycle inside every cell that we can visualize like a TV screen. So knowledge is constantly changing and we need to change with the knowledge if we, if we want to survive. And I think we really need to get out of each other's business. Um, if you like someone, you follow them. If you don't, you go the other way. And that's, that's the human experience to me. Yep. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So I'm curious if you had to, so if, uh, listeners, you know, listening to us right now and they're in a place in their life where they think they want to, you know, start a social media page or they want to go a different direction than what they're currently doing. Maybe they're interested in IHP. What would be your one bit of advice for somebody in that position? My advice would be to do it because when you feel like that, that's those sort of teachings, they don't just, it's not like, Oh, I want to, you know, when you want to be a baseball player, that's usually because you either love baseball or, you know, they make millions of dollars. Um, when it comes to being a health coach, which like I said, you don't want to call me a doctor. You can call me anything you want. You know, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change anything about me. And I think people need to, um, follow their passion and, and really what they feel and not look to an outside source for justification. So for me, it's a no brainer. Like the IHP course is incredible. What it does is it exposes you to what exists within you. And I think when people really start to, um, you know, have it come from an outside source, oh, this is what's built within you. These are the methods of staying healthy. This is what's been, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, this is what we use, you know, anti-parasitic protocols. And we knew that we were exposed to microbes and this is what we did to avoid them. Understanding anthropology, Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic medicine, functional medicine, diet, lifestyle, environment, as it pertains to health and disease, it just as you start these programs like IHP and the other ones, you just, like I said in the beginning, you just want to call your mom and your brother and your, listen to this. Like you, you know, do you know that mushrooms have anti-aromatase agaricus bisporus that can neutralize the aromatization of estradiol and estriol um, into bad cancer causing, um, you know, like four hydroxy estriol, which is a, is the cancer causing estrogen. We, the foods we eat can control this. And once you realize that you can't look away, I mean, you can, but you know it in the back of your head. And most people that don't want to agree with us, they're in what's known as cognitive dissonance. Their, their steak tastes too good. The Cheetos taste too good. That's the way they want to live. And guess what? I want that for them. I want them to have their Cheetos. I want them to have their whatever they want because that's how it should be. Um, but I really, I implore people to seek out this information, whether you want to take it on as a career whether you want to just take it on because you are a human being and it's really important to kind of under, we are the only, you know, what separates us away from primates is the fact that we can reason our thoughts. We understand what's happening while it's happening. And that is beautiful to be able to understand that broccoli contains isothiocyanates and sulforaphane um, that can halt cancer progression in its tracks. Like there are studies, Dr. Michael Greger, um, of nutritionfacts.org plug. He is an incredible medical doctor and he explains you know, how these things work and sulforaphane, for instance, which is found in all cruciferous vegetables, the brassica family, you know, your kale, kohlrabi, arugula, broccoli, all the stuff you guys know, it has the ability, you know, he used a Petri dish of cancer cells and he literally spliced the line in the middle and he put sulforaphane and the cancer cells would not only pass that line, but they would regress and die. And we know this, like this, in, of course it's in vitro, not in vivo, but there's a theoretical aspect there, right? I mean, it's, it, it, they are cancer cells and that is broccoli and this is how it works. So for me, I'd much rather tap into the harmony and the connection that we have. You know, we were born, you know, on the earth, we were born naked, you know, feet touching the ground, skin under the sun. Yet we want to call all of that voodoo and conspiracy and, you know, like, 
like, like, that, like mythology, but that's, that's truly where the health exists. And these programs like yours, IHP, they really kind of, they reveal all that to you. And when, when that's revealed to you, you can do one of two things. You can ignore it. Um, or you can grasp onto it with every fiber of your being. And that's when your life starts to change. And then people around you change. And then you see these advocates like veganism, for instance, and you know, where people are like, like, Oh, once you turn vegan, all you hear from vegans are this, this, and that it's because they feel incredible. They really want you to feel incredible and they love animals. I mean, should you really blame them? But all people hear about is the stigma. Oh, vegans, oh, oh, CrossFitters are always talking about CrossFit. Who cares? If you want to learn about CrossFit, go to a CrossFitter. If you want to learn how to really use food as medicine, talk to a vegan and ask them questions. Don't ridicule them. Don't belittle them and, you know, eat whatever you want. But to understand the harmony that exists between nature and our bodies and the fact that we have, we have receptors for, for instance, cannabinoids. Um, everybody relates cannabinoids to cannabis, but echinacea, chocolate, they all have cannabinoids, right? And we have an endocannabinoid system, a system that can literally modulate our sleep, our circadian rhythms, our immune system through what's known as the endocannabinoid system. And why do we have these receptors in our body if they weren't meant to be bound by plant chemicals, phytochemicals? So we need to like remove the stigma. Oh, marijuana, you're a, you're a pothead. Like just stop because that was something that humans placed on these herbs. And we need to realize that it all exists within us. And, you know, corn is not unhealthy. Uh, potatoes are not unhealthy. It's what we've done to the corn and what we've done to the potatoes. If it grows from the earth, eat it. It's unadulterated food and it was, it's there for us. And that's what, you know, long roundabout to your question. That's what these programs teach you. They, they remind you the harmony that you have between earth, its bounty and our bodies. Yeah, of course. Yep. And it, again, the knowledge is the power, right? Like you said, so once- true. In, in the IHP, if you never even want to be a health coach, it still allows you to take care of your family, to take care of yourself. To, to in, If it's just one person that you kind of take under your wing to give them the knowledge, the power, who knows what knowledge and power they're going to send out to the world. And then that's how it kind of just continues to ripple and we hopefully change the world, right? So true. <laughs> it's true. Like I tell people all the time, oh, um, you know, Dr. Joe, I don't know if I can do this in my state. I'm like, look, this information isn't just to create a career. Now it's great because of what's going on in the world. If you want to be a virtual, um, you know, have a virtual job, this is perfect. And not only that, but you can, you can apply this stuff because you are, like I said, you're human. And, um, but take all that away. Like you said, who doesn't want to know about what exists within them? Um, and that's what started me down my whole career, like being an educator, being a physician, trying to help people understand what exists within them around them and how to be the best human they could possibly be. So forget career. How about corroborating and supporting your human body and really learning about, you know, what exists within you. And that's, that's, I think that, that if I wasn't a doctor and I was someone who, you know, had a different job, not in the healthcare system, my first thought would be, I want to acquire the information I need to keep myself functioning as best as possible to stay away from hospitals and do that for my family. And that to me, I don't know how people don't just run towards it, but I truly do. And it's the disconnection. It's the, I have a meeting, I have bills. Um, I have, I have this appointment, you know, we're literally, we're not living for a living. We're putting all of our true, um, you know, our true, uh, what we should be our natural instinct and innate intelligence as being human beings. We're literally stifling. It. It's like stuffing a sock down its throat while we go do all this other stuff. And then we expect our body to love us back when you just ignored it. You know, you're literally, you're just like put turning the music up when your car is making noise, your car is clinking and clanking and there's oil falling out and you're like covering your eyes and turning up the radio and everything's fine. You know, and then we wake up one day and we have illness, you know, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, heart disease, the leading causes of death that have plagued our, in my country, our country, America, since Nixon declared war on cancer in the eighties. I mean, cancer is still the number two leading cause of death. Yet we have carcinogenic compound. You can go to Publix, which is our nat- our grocer in the Southeast and pick up something that has a known carcinogen in it. It's on the shelf. So that's why moms, dads, kids can think that, oh, you're crazy, Dr. Joe. Like my government would have told me that. Well, no, they're not gonna tell you that because they're more interested in the billions and trillions of dollars. Um, and it's just a matter of time. They all have each other's ha- hands in each other's pockets and you're not going to get through at this point. You have to do for yourself and people really have to acquire the information 
that's necessary to do so or else handing over like we started it is nobody's responsibility but our own um to to be healthy or to be sick that nobody else did that you cannot make somebody sick without their permission i.e their immune system being down due to their choices and what they've decided to do with their life yeah absolutely Dr. Joe, it's been such a pleasure having you here. Uh, I would love for you to share with the listeners where they can find you on social media, whatever your platforms are. Um, please share with the listeners where, where that is. Sure. Well, Julia, it was a pleasure. I, you know, when you guys reached out to me, I, I, I knew this was something I had to do because I want to teach people, but I think teaching educators, you know, like you said, touching one person that can touch a thousand is easier than touching a thousand people and reaching them. So I really like to get to the people who want to educate. And that's why I, d- I agreed to do this. Um, I agreed to take the time away and move things around so I could be here with you. Um, what I do, most of my, um, my work is on Instagram, um, Dr. Dot Joseph arena, just the way it, it's spelled. Um, but I have a website that I'm working on. It's www.drjosepharina without the dot, same as my handle on Instagram. And what I do is I basically help people analyze and assess their lifestyle. I mean, I'm going to talk to you about the shampoo you use, the laundry detergent, um, about the air quality in your home. I'm going to be talking to you about everything. So I hop on the phone with people. Um, I really, I know I have a very extensive intake, 25 page intake form, environmental toxin questionnaire, food diary. I spend a long time, not just 15 minutes reviewing it, but time. And then I hop on the phone and I, I give people what they've been missing from the healthcare system attention. Um, focus and, and just where all the answers lie are where, with what we can do, not with what our doctors can do. You know, like all the doctors are concerned with the pill that goes in your mouth, but they don't want to know about the food, air, or water that goes into your mouth, which has an effect on the physiology too. So that's where you can find me. Um, hope, hoping that the Instagram stays up for a little while. I know weird things are happening, but, um, I do have a newsletter you can sign up to through my Instagram on my link tree. And send me a message if there's anything I could do, anything I could answer, anything I could do to help you guys either find a career path or just further your education as a human being to understand what exists within you and your beautiful children, even your animals, everything in the household. Um, you guys can be your own best doctor. So Absolutely. I had a great time. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your inspiration. Um, it was great to have you on the Integrative Health Coaching Success Podcast. I hope we can talk soon, Dr. Joe. Thank you. You're for very welcome. Me. Sounds good. Bye, Julia. Okay, Thank you. bye-bye.